Hello, and welcome to Making Sense of It. I am Mona Duncan, your moderator. This program is our gift to you from the Glasser Institute for Choice Theory, where we have speakers come in with the Institute and explain reality therapy and choice theory and how we use it in our lives. And maybe you'll want to join and begin to use it in your life also. Normally, um, I had a speaker scheduled for today, and there was a, this being a worldwide organization, I was going to be, Jeff Steedman was going to be our speaker for today, and we tried to connect last night, and we didn't until way late, too late to, to take for today, and it was the you know, what's going on, what's going on, and what it was is the difference in the daylight savings time, you know, and maybe not everyone, anyway, we uh, set it aside, and Jeff is going to present his uh, looking into the five choices of choice theory, and he will, that will be in November. We have rescheduled with him. But in the meantime, I sent out a little note to three of our regulars that's on here that's always supporting and gives really good input whenever we have our chat time. And so I invited Sue, Sharon, and Alice to join today and uh, thought we would present a little activity that Bob Hoagland introduced several years ago that's been very effective and it's the first question is what is choice theory well you know in training we are not necessarily in reality therapy type training but in um social media and so forth you are encouraged to have an elevator speech that if you are on an elevator and someone said what do you do and you say i am this and then you give them a little 60 second definition of what what it is you do so that maybe that can be a new customer or a new client for you so anyway i would like to have the first question is what is choice theory so what would be your elevator definition of what choice theory is to someone that just ask about it what is choice theory how would you define that to someone how human beings go about their lives okay Okay, Sue, how would you define choice theory? Well, that was Sue. So. Oh, well, it was Sue. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Sharon, how would you define choice theory? Um, I would add to what Sue said, I think, and say choice theory is a psychology that explains the way human, be human beings um, meet their needs and relate with each other to have okay. a, a successful life. Okay, how they relate to each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how, how they understand our, our needs and personal behavior and how we use that with relating to, with others. Okay, sounds good. Alice? I'm sort of making this up, but um, <laughs> uh, choice theory is um, explains that a person chooses their behavior mm -hmm. based on the influence of, of, of their needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very, very good. Well, mm -hmm. my little elevator speech is that choice theory is a psychological theory that everything mm -hmm. we do is our choice, whether we are aware of it or not. And for me personally, having lived it out for 20 years now, it has become not a theory, but a fact that uh, whether we think that we're making that choice, when we really get honest with ourselves, whether, whether it's in, whether it's kind and benevolent or whether it is being grouchy and pouty, we're still making that choice whenever we really let ourselves know that we are. So our next question is, 
from your years of being a part of choice theory, what do you consider to be the most important concept? Hmm. What do you consider to be the most important concept of the theory that we make our own choices? Of course, there's a whole long list of axioms and, and other things that go along with the theory of making choices. But what do you consider to be the most important concept? Well, it has to be that we are we all make our own choices, whether we realize that we are realizing it or not, and that we are responsible for those choices as we relate to others. Um, and you know, being able to understand that I can only control myself. I might be able to influence others, but I only control myself. Mm -hmm. I mean. That to me is the essence. There's a lot more that helps us flesh it out, but <laughs> yeah. I guess I guess being a um, a novice at this, what what has really helped me um, with respect to choice theory is um, the five needs. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and and knowing or trying to attribute high or low needs for different people has made it possible for me to further understand myself and another person's personality. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that you have come to an understanding that we all have some basic needs Mm -hmm. but that each person has them in different levels. Yeah. And so exactly. how you are learning to adjust your temperament to be more relatable to someone else's temperament. Mm -hmm. And no, no, no. Um, I'm just um, understanding myself, not changing myself unless, you know, there's some negativity in, in what I'm doing, but understanding what, for me, it's understanding what makes other people tick, you know, um, and um, oh, well, he has a high power need and a low love and belonging need, and that's why he's a jerk. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So also, am I hearing you say Makes for sense. understanding <laughs> as opposed to judgment? Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as we understand another, <laughs> we are more likely to not judge another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that same vein, I think I'd go with um, all behavior is purposeful. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. So whether it's because of a particular need or whether it's because of a quality world picture or whether it's because of not having a particular behavior in one's repertoire, whatever it is, that whatever behavior is going on, even if it looks like there's no behavior happening at all, there's still a purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. May not be a conscious purpose, but there's still a purpose. Okay that everything we do is for a purpose, whether we know it or not. Right. And that ties back into Alice's talking about the needs. The behavior is purposefully trying to meet the needs. Right, right. And we need, meet the needs through our quality world pictures. Right. Sometimes we are able to obtain them and sometimes we are not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I would think, I mean, for me personally, the most important concept of choice theory is the fact that it is it, it uh, the locus of control is all within each one mm -hmm. of us and it goes hand in hand with what each one of you have said is that because that locus of control is within us then we have behaved in a purposeful manner even if you know they say you're under arrest and put your hands behind your back you're going to jail <laughs> because the the behavior may not be purposeful in a community and in, you know, but uh, yeah. Okay, so next question is, which concept of choice theory do you find to be the most difficult? 
Hmm. The most difficult to follow through with. I'll go on this one. I hadn't even thought about this before, but the chatter here with Alice has made me think of it, that perhaps the most difficult, it, it now it's relatively easy, but initially the most difficult for me was to look for understanding rather than judgment. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I was pretty quick to think I knew what somebody else was thinking and it's realizing that, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. So to go for understanding. Uh, is and to be willing to let another person be who they are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what do you see as being the most difficult concept of reality therapy and choice theory um perhaps the idea that all we can do is give people information and attempt to persuade people to see things in a particular way or to do things in a particular way, as opposed to having our own way with them, you know, <laughs> like, okay, I may understand that you have needs, but stop being a jerk. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and understanding that behavior is called a jerk in my book, not in his or maybe someone else's book. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it's why that part. <laughs> yeah, it's I know. That part. Well, wait a minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. Right. That's the hard, that's the hard part. That's right. The hard part. Right. It's my picture, <laughs> not their picture. And, right. <laughs> <laughs> and how can we bring the two together? Right. Is back to the understanding their behavior is information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alice, you have any thoughts on that? Um, I, I sometimes feel that there's no room for emotion mm. in, the, in choice theory, but maybe I don't know enough about it. So if someone could kind of help me with that. Okay, well, well I'd like to hear. Okay, so you want to say something to that? Well, just an interesting piece. And I think we've talked about total behavior before, but it almost seems that perhaps because we put so much more emphasis on thinking and so much more emphasis on behavior, on action, thinking that in total behavior that the emotion don't let emotion drive your behaviors. Don't let the emotion make the decisions. Don't let that the idea being perhaps that emotion um, will lead to some faulty action, some faulty decisions, which I don't believe was ever the intention because all behavior does engage emotion as well. But it's like, so what do you think about feeling that way? What do you feel about thinking that way becomes an interesting perspective. Um, but interesting that it, it's almost more rational than it is emotive. Right. But yeah. those emotions, that back wheel for, for the feelings is what gives us the information for us to uh, determine how we are doing, whether... Right. I mean, that's in the physiology, both. They, they feed the front two wheels, but then we are in control of the front two wheels and we can choose what we do with that information. You right. know, and, and for children, you know, it's sad, mad, glad. You know, those are the, you know, easy ways. It's telling us, are we happy? Are we glad? Are we sad mm -hmm. for whatever reason? You know, are we mad for whatever reason? And then my thinking has to deal with those other than what you were saying, Sue, that it becomes emotive and, and the emotions take over. And we all get there on that back wheel sometimes <laughs> because the tilt is so severe. Mm -hmm. We want our emotions in the four wheels of the car. The front two are the thoughts we think and the actions we take. Mm -hmm. The back two are the 
emotional feelings that we feel as well as the physiology as to whether or not we're, we're sick or healthy or blood pressure going up or whatever. And so the front wheels lead us and the back wheels, um, well, they follow, but they also, we want the back wheels to, we want to feel good about what we thought and how we backed it. And so I, I love that thought of that. We don't want those emotions to drive our car. We don't want those emotions to, or those feelings to be the, to be what's going out there that's off-putting. Mm -hmm. We want them to follow and then that we can feel good about the way we handle the situation. Mm -hmm. But yet what, I, what I'm thinking now is overall, the overall purpose is to have pleasure and to be happy, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't, I can't quote Dr. Glasser, but that was really it, that we're looking mm -hmm. at our own behavior for happiness, for joy, mm -hmm. you know, so there's the basic emotion that's always underneath it. Is this helping you to get what you want? And the bottom line is what you want overall is happiness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, Right, right, right. So it's it's interesting then for Alice to perceive that because it's not as emotive, but mm -hmm. that a key emotion is behind it. Is right. is the is the launching point for it all. Right. You know, what do you want to do so that you'll have more happiness? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. And I think a key understanding for me is that we label any behavior by the most obvious will. Running would be a physical activity, but that doesn't mean we aren't feeling good. Oh, I hate this. Why do they talk me into doing this? Or boy, this feels so bad, I'm good. You know? And then of course the thinking is, I want to do it for health reasons. I want to do it because my friend's doing it. And then action is actually doing it. So if we understand that our behaviors are labeled by the most obvious will, but that that obvious wheel isn't hmm. controlling isn't controlling us. Our thinking and actions are what's pulling that along. But you know, but, uh, but and where do those labels come from? Who's putting who's, who's putting the label on that wheel? Mm -hmm. Right. Who is? I am. I am. <laughs> or may we be judging someone else and putting the label on them, and it may not have been their real intention. Exactly. And so as we can begin to, to see that it's all that internal control for us and to have compassion for the other person that has not yet learned about that internal control for themselves. Mm -hmm. To want to act in a way that is going to be the doing and the leading and have, you know, have not only <clears throat> our emotions and our, our health physiology follow but to have those that are, that see us as a leader to want to be able to follow suit with those mm -hmm. qualities. Okay. What do you think, Alice? Mm -hmm. I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Give more thought to it. Huh? Or you can emote about it anytime. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is, you know what, I'm a, I'm a visual learner. Um, is there any particular book or part of the theory that talks about that that I could read about? <laughs> uh, we'll look it up and get back with you. Well, okay. choice theory itself does within the book. The book. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. They will okay. go through all of that. You know, um, the first four chapters essentially cover the theory, and then okay. after that, there's applications within for us to use. Okay, well, here is one of the challenge questions and we'll talk about this and then we'll, we'll be through for today. If all we can do is process information, okay, mm -hmm. we're, we're receiving this information and all we can do is process it. If all we can do is process information and then we choose how we think and how we act and all this kind of stuff, how is it possible for someone to hurt our feelings. <laughs> that was a change, a challenge question that, that Bob Hoagland asked. 
And I think that's going hand in hand with what we're speaking about here. That um, how can we let someone else hurt us? Well, I like to think back on uh, what was her name? Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt. That said, mm -hmm. huh? no one, no one can make you feel inferior without your permission. Your permission. Ooh. Right. I like that. As you're saying that you have given them permission to wound you. Now it's not saying that what they said did not hurt. It was and goes back to the the bullet hitting the person that's wearing the, the protective vest. It doesn't mean that it won't hurt, that it won't bruise deeply, but it will mean that it won't penetrate and bleed out. If we right. wear that protective coating oh, and we yeah. realize that this, and the, what the person says, it may have wounded us because there was a point to it. <laughs> yeah. That it's something that um, we might could be a more productive person if we were more in tune to the fact that what we were saying, doing was real inappropriate or off-putting or not relationship building right it goes back to what sue said a moment ago that all we get is information and that information then is our choice how we deal with it and some information does hurt as you said but we can de decide am i going to be poor me and wither away and be sad or am i going to use that information possibly to better myself or look at myself in a different way you know, maybe it's the information I need to hear. <laughs> what was your statement last mm -hmm. week, uh, Mona, mm -hmm. that when we get information that hurts, it may be useful information? Right. I mean, it was sharp. Oh, ouch, that hurt. Mm -hmm. That maybe it hurt for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because it may have been very legitimate. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so that information is something we have to, to think about. Right. And even, and even in looking at that information, uh, we may have seen it as weighing a ton, but when we get real down to it, it was only a few hundred pounds <laughs> as opposed to 2,000. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, though, if it's information, so the question becomes, if it's information that we take in and we process, and if we're in control, mm -hmm. then... How do we allow something to hurt us or to affect us or to influence us in any way if it's just information? Um, some of that, I believe, has to do with where the information is coming from, who mm -hmm. the relationship that one has with someone, right. the credibility that that person has. Mm -hmm with you with with the person receiving the information like are there people who will say something that you just go <laughs> yeah exactly and it does it just rolls off and you just go yeah okay you know and then are there people who it really it it has a great deal of impact mm -hmm. um because of the relationship that it, it almost seems that if we, if we take Eleanor Roosevelt's quote, that we almost give permission to those people that are part of our quality world, that are the people that we value, mm -hmm. the people that are important to us, are credible to us. Right. I have a example that I think may fit with this. Uh, I knew someone, <clears throat> who um, their boss was always, you know, kind of the walk around manager, but their common thing to say is, are you rolling? Are you rolling? Are you rolling? Mm -hmm. And it was just a real irritant to my friend and was just, just so angry. And, and the thing of it is, is that over time, this person that was angry at the other person took on that same persona. <laughs> <laughs> and would ask people, you know, are you rolling or how's it going or something to that effect that was real nitpicky to someone else and 
absolutely refused to see that what had wounded them was in turn becoming an irritant that they were giving off. Wow. And I how, see. yeah. And then if someone, you know, turns around and says something, well, it was just like, ah, you know, I'm blind, I'm deaf, I can't hear it because I'm doing what, and what was the motive behind it? Well, who knows? Only we can know what's our motive mm -hmm. behind it. And is it done for just a, you know, sometimes you do things and say things that kind of like that uh, knee-jerk reaction mm -hmm. that you get such in a habit of. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Right. Well, thank well, you. Yeah, I was going to say one more thing. You just reminded me of a big understanding for me. When we look at the zapper that challenges our, our wants not being met, once I understood that that was just an instantaneous feeling that I was not controlled by that feeling, I could then move on to my behavior of thinking and acting what I wanted to do with that. That, that it's just a short time and then we are back. We mm -hmm. drive our cars, steer it where we want it to go. I mean, right, right. Excellent, excellent point. That little initial z that makes you mm -hmm. want to just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, Put it in reverse yeah. and do what you want to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And something that sometimes I like. Sometimes to... though, sorry, sometimes though, I don't think we're, we, we have that understanding of what is it, you know, mm -hmm. what's missing here, what need isn't being met, what, what actually is it that I do feel badly right. about, and, you know, why is that happening? And that's what time does for us, to ask for time, to know I need time before I respond. Mm -hmm. And as we begin to learn to pause before reacting, mm -hmm. because all we, can, all we can do is receive information, but at the same time, all we can do is give information. Mm -hmm. And if we have a pause there so that we're not in a hyper state mm -hmm. in giving mm -hmm. information, but in a more calm state. Mm -hmm. And we can give it more effectively and more true to who we really are or who we are really becoming. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the three of you for uh, participating and helping with this. And thank our other guests for tuning in and being a part. And we're going to close out for today. So many blessings and good mental health.